In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to generate the surface of the moon in Blender using geometry nodes. And when I say generate, that sounds complicated, but actually, it's super simple. We're just going to displace a plane with four different noise textures. Head to the geometry nodes tab, get rid of the spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet is actually useful. I've just not used it in any of my tutorials yet. I'm sure we'll get to that eventually. I also found out that you can click this button to hide the little gizmos here. Hit new, name it, ground. And we're not going to use the default cube here. Add a grid node. This just generates a plane. It lets you choose how many vertices it has in each direction and how big it is. We want our ground to be fairly large, so let's change these to 50 meters. And the first thing we're going to do is subdivide this. So add a subdivide mesh and set it to 6. And that's what our subdivided plane looks like with the wireframe on. If you want to turn your wireframe on and off with keyboard shortcut, click this little thing the viewport overlays, and you can turn the wireframe on and off with this checkbox here, or right click on it, and assign a shortcut. Alright, the next step is the first layer of noise. We're doing that with a set position node, and we'll need a noise detector, connect this color into a, connect it into a subtract node, a vector math subtract, not this one. Subtract 0.5 from it, because the noise texture outputs values in a range from 0 to 1, we want them to be in a negative and positive range. Subtracting 0.5 does that. From this one, add a scale. This will let us control the strength of it. And from this one, let's use a combine XYZ. We'll use the entire vector just as the Z. Vectors here, the purple ones, represent three values, an X, Y, and a Z. When you plug that into a gray one, which is a float, which is a single value, it converts it to a single value by averaging, averaging them out, I think. So these three values will have no trouble being converted to just one. And you can plug that into the offset. The reason we're using this is because it will now only be displacing the position on the z-axis and not the x or the y. So it will only be displaced in the up and down direction, which is what we want for this ground. With the scale, we can change the strength of it, but the noise is far too fine, so let's decrease the scale quite a bit. Okay, something like 0.12 looks best for me. Also, increase the detail to its maximum for as much detail as possible. And we can also add some distortion. Just remember, always go light on the distortion. It's easy to make that too heavy. So I'm just going with 0.24. Alright, and this already looks quite amazing. It would look better if the mesh was more subdivided. Let's duplicate our subdivide node. And change it to just one. Put it back in here. Another layer of subdivision. Maybe another one. Another one. If I go too high, it'll, Blender will crash, but this already looks quite nice. You can click the viewport overlays menu here to turn them all off and see what it looks like without all the grid lines and stuff. And it already looks extremely rocky and rough, but we can make it even better. We have this here to control the strength of the noise, and mine is reacting really slowly, so I'm going to turn down the subdivision a couple levels. Yeah, it looks best right around 12 or 13. A good way to add more randomness would be to control this scale with another noise texture. Let's just duplicate this scale node, put it here. Duplicate this noise texture, put it here, and plug this factor into the scale. And if we change our noise textures both to 4D, we get this extra value called W. It just changes what part of the noise we're looking at. So it will let us make these two looking different parts of the noise, so they won't be showing the exact same noise texture, which would make our pattern look repetitive. And we can add a color ramp node to regulate this effect here. Now we can, you can see if the more black I put in here, the flatter it gets more white, bumpier it gets. So I'll put the black all the way down there and put the white, maybe something right in here. It gives a more organic look to the terrain, I think. Also, I'm going to shade it smooth with a set shade smooth node. And now let's, it, let's add in a second layer of noise. This will add some indentations, almost like craters or really worn down or ancient craters to the surface. We can duplicate these three nodes because we'll need them all again. Actually, not the scale. From this Z, let's add a multiply. Let's add a Voronoi texture. And we're just going to plug the distance into the multiply. So let us change the strength of it. Ideally, perhaps we have it too small. Oh, I forgot to connect the node here. Do not do that. And that looks excitingly like an omelet or something. You can change the strength of it here, but that, the strength is okay. I think we just need to scale it down smaller. Maybe 0.1 or 0.12. Try that. And scaling it back up to 1. We can add a color ramp here, too, to put some space between our craters. 
Ah, oh, that's looking nice. This part's really up to your artistic taste. If you're going off an actual reference image, this would probably be a good time to check that. But I am not. Okay, I like something right in there that looks very nice. It's just a very subtle cratered effect. You can't really tell without looking for it. But if you turn it off, you notice that it's gone. Now I just want to add another layer of noise, just another normal noise texture for like a final fine detail pass. So we'll need this node, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Shift D to duplicate. Put them over here. Move these out of the way. Connect it all up. It looks horrible. Let's delete one of the scale nodes. If you press Control X, you can delete a node and it will reconnect where it was removed. Super useful. And in this case, we want it to create some finer details. I'm going to turn the distortion back to zero and scale it up a little bit. Not that large, maybe just to one. And change the W a little bit. It's like changing a random seed now, it's just a different piece of noise. And we'll need to scale this down a whole lot more. How about 0.1? Can we tell a difference? Very, very tiny difference. What if we add more resolution again? Go back to your subdivide nodes, turn one up to two, maybe even three. This is a good time to save your Blender file. Okay, I can see it's making a slight difference. I turn it up a little bit, but it is definitely up to personal taste. However, it looks very nice. This looks real and rocky at this point. And it's really pretty much done. There's not a whole lot left to do. We can add a material, which you do with a set material node, and pick the material here. I'll just pick the default material. Add to the shading tab. I'll use cycles. No need that. Don't need that. I'll just turn on an HDRI really quick. These HDRIs up here, if you just uncheck scene world, lets you preview your scene with any HDRI you want. Name this moon surface. And let's keep it simple. We'll start with the noise texture again. Let's connect this straight to the output to have a look at it. If you hit Control T, it'll automatically generate a texture coordinate node and a mapping node for you. And since this is a procedurally generated ground, it helps to use the object coordinates. This way, our, this noise texture will be using the same coordinates as the ones in geometry nodes. So we'll get familiar results. Let's try point two, 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 two. Why not? And turn up the detail. And let's add a color ramp. More black. I try to turn up the black so that I can see more of it, but once it starts flattening out and making these black patches, that's too much. We want it to be right in there, just before it's making those flat spots. And then I'll bring the white in for more contrast. And the moon is not actually white, let's make that more gray. Or at least I think so, I've never really been there. Plug it into the base color, see how that looks. Alright, looks... Very nice, actually. I need to tweak the scale depending on how close we're viewing it from, but if we were to look at it from right here, it doesn't look very repetitive. I also want to add in a very fine bump map to simulate, like, tiny bits of dust on the surface. And to do that, I'll duplicate the noise texture, plug in the same vector, turn the roughness up a notch, maybe 0.6, turn the scale up to, like, 42, plug this factor into the height of a bump node, and plug that into the normal map. It's obviously way too strong, let's turn it down a bit, and something like 0.183 seems to look nice. It looks a little bit repetitive, like a pattern on the surface, but if you were to scatter rocks or something all over this, you don't think you would notice. Now here's what it looks like rendered without the material, here's what it looks like rendered with the material, here's what it looks like rendered with the material and with a bunch of icospheres representing moon rocks. With this lighting setup too, it looks really neat. And you can learn to make this lighting setup in like just 10 minutes. If you just hop over to my newsletter, you don't even have to sign up. You can just read it right online. Simple article explaining how to set up this lighting. It's actually very useful lighting and extremely simple. It's great for anything space, space scenes, asteroid scenes, planet scenes, all that stuff.
So make sure you check that out. There's a link in the description. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching. You just learned how to make the surface of the moon in Blender, and it didn't take you very long, and it was pretty easy. So great work.